Hello there, welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for playing better faster. Today we're going to analyze Cam Smith, the newly crowned Open Championship winner and champion golfer of the year, 150th anniversary of the tournament, and at the home of golf, St. Andrews. Isn't that cool? Well, he hit the ball great this week, but he putted it lights out. We'll say something about putting at the end of this, but let's analyze his golf swing since we have him on Swing Catalyst. Well, Cam likes to play a draw. Let's see if we can figure out why his swing wants to draw the golf ball. He sets up just fine. His posture is beautiful. If we look at the Swing Catalyst stuff, at the address, 56% of his pressure on his front foot. Isn't that interesting? That is pretty much standard around golfers. They start out a little bit on the left foot. And this right down here shows that he begins his backswing with a little push off of the left foot. See that? He's pushing off of his left foot toward the target as he starts the backswing. Now, you're going to see something really cool. He has one of the most centered pivots, meaning he does not move off the golf ball to the right. He doesn't lean toward the target either. He just basically turns around. He has a little bit of hip turn, and from this side he has very little knee movement, but some. Fine. Nothing to it. Very centered. He only gets with this iron, and this is a 200-something yard, I believe a 6 iron it is. He only gets a 67% on the trail foot. The max, oh, he gets to 76. But wait a minute. Look at that. That's the backswing. His 76 is when he starts to really push off in the downswing. So he actually, if you will, loads this trail foot. He steps on the trail foot and then pushes that carpet that way to start the downswing. And that's when his pressure actually increases. And that is absolutely, this is his right foot push off in this direction. And that's really, really cool. Then he gets moving into his front shoe, 74%. He's going, he's going, 77, 82. I like to see no less than about 80 at impact. That, that was pretty good. And you can see now his left foot is going to drive up off the ground on the way through. Now this, folks, is really interesting. Does anything in his footwork suggest draw? In fact, it does. His left foot push is actually later. See, left knee stays bent longer, and that allows him to stay turned sideways longer, and then he pushes up. So we would call him a little bit later turn, or what I would call that's a draw movement of the feet. Now I got something else for you that is really, really cool. So as you know now, the left foot pushes this way during the backswing, the right foot pushes this way in the transition, then at the follow through here, the left foot's pushing again. That's all written on this. Here, yes, we see that it is a little bit late. Fair enough? All right, that's really cool. Now, his shoulders are slightly open, hips are slightly open, just like you might see from a draw player. But I want you to watch this right shoe. This is a really big deal. This is a draw move if I ever saw it. I call this putting out the cigarette butt. What I want you to see is how he actually screws this shoe into the ground and rotates that way. You'll see Rory McIlroy do the same exact thing. See that foot go? What do you see on his driver, folks? So that foot twisting the plate this direction, right, clockwise, actually helps accelerate him, but it actually also creates more of a draw motion because it slows down the hip turn. He's pushing this way which is called external rotation of the trail hip. Ignore that, folks. 
push that way, more draw. Don't, less draw. There, I said it. Okay, you can see that that little footwork thing goes on and this is the torque portion. This is the rotation, okay? We have the linear shift. We have the turn and we have the lift force, okay? Here he goes, coming into impact. Look at him go. And you can see the turn. And you can see that his shift force is much higher than his turn force. And his lift force is much higher than his turn force. Huh, he's basically a bigger shifter and lifter. That's a little bit of draw. So he shifts and lifts and has plenty of turn, but it's definitely not his dominant source. That says draw the golf ball. Isn't that cool? The lift force, this is very interesting, right in here. Watch the force go down. As he starts to move toward the target, he lowers himself. And when he lowers himself, some folks will call that loading. This is the force plate saying he's actually unloading so that he can then load. Got it? He's not loading down into the ground. He's unloading. Then right there, he starts pushing up hard. And it's a whole bunch of push. That's double his weight. Isn't that cool? So that's really neat. Let's check out this down the line view. Another thing that makes him draw biased would be that this golf club is getting a little bit behind. Okay, fine. A lot behind his head. When that happens in a good player, almost universally, you will see them do something in the transition that gets that out of there or else. Now, he starts to kind of, well, you can see the handle coming down, right? Watch this. So he's pulling down quite vertically, just a little angled toward the ball. And that golf club, because of that force on the handle, starts to drop behind him. Now, here's the thing. When he starts to hit those snap hooks as he is prone to and pushes way right, that face is closed. I get it. It's not because of that, though. And I'll show you that in a minute. What happens is, if he rushes his transition and that club stays steeper than that too long up there, it's going to fall under plane late. And what happens is the club will get behind him too far here. And we notice that this golf ball was pushed off to the right. Let's see that launch monitor. This was pushed off to the right. That's 216, probably a five or six iron, but it's pushed off to the right. That's the move. So if he rushes that transition, this will get under plane late and that will shove the path extra inside out. This club path was a nine. Now he may be aiming righter, his feet or not, but he may be planning to hit over this way more. I don't know that because I wasn't there for this one. But in any case, that's what's going on there. His exit is absolutely, that's fade. That's a fade exit if I ever saw it. And this is his saving grace, most likely. Now, with a driver, watch what happens. And this is a you know, 300 yard carry drive or something like that, 284. Watch this one. The club gets really back behind him. Whoa. And now it's going to get going the other way big time. So it's okay here, but watch how it continues to fall flatter and the handle goes out more toward the target line. All right, so this is very under plane right now. If he has a smooth transition, that is a move unlike, uh, just like Fred Couples. He can use, positively, he can use that. If he rushes that transition, and I think you saw that at Sawgrass when he started hitting the ball really hard left, that's what's going on. Got it? Cool stuff. So you can use this crossover backswing as long as you have a smooth transition. If you have a crossover backswing, a little long, it's okay. But boy, you better not rush the transition. Now, check out that trail foot again. So here he goes back. You see, still terribly centered pivot, right? Let's go back here and look at that pressure. At the top of the backswing with a driver, goodness gracious. 57% on the trail foot. He is as centered pivot as I have ever seen. 
folks. Then you're going to see him step on the right foot a little bit. See the right foot push backward? And you'll see this angle the foot this way. The guys like Dustin Johnson who spin hard, his foot from here, Dustin Johnson's foot would already be up at this angle. But because our boy here is going this way with that rotation of that shoe, his foot stays down, keeps his hips turned a little bit longer in the closed direction. So Cam Smith has a lot of draw elements in his golf swing. Very cool. Now, just so you know, he does have a lot of shirt button up, belly button to the sky. Right? I love that. Love that a bunch. That's really, really good. That's a really, really good move. And he's hitting, I believe it was two or three up on the golf ball, which is wonderful. Uh, hitting down the golf ball is wonderful if you're trying to hit it a little bit less distance. That's a wonderful body motion right there, isn't it? But I would say in his swing, that matches with a slower start down. Everything else looks very much like a draw. I think it's fantastic. You'll notice once again, there's a right foot kickoff, right? Here's the left foot. Ah, this one here, the left foot pushes much earlier. How about them apples, right? That's probably a good thing for him. The torque. When you see this little jiggy jaggy in there, that means the mat probably slid a little bit. A lot of vertical force too. 224% of his body weight in vertical force. So even still, top end of the PGA Tour with the shift, left foot this time, 35% push off. The left foot, the lift, that's starting the push and lift. Very much a draw motion. In fact, for a lot of folks, this is probably a really good idea if you are suffering with a slice. That's really cool. Look at that foot. That's a draw foot, folks. Look at the hips. Draw hips. Now we have one more thing that we got to talk about. We said earlier that that club face is pretty darn closed right there. Ah, but wait, folks. When he comes down through impact, He's got so much handle pull. See how the, his hands are out in front of his left thigh. That's an opener. So we have a closer and an opener. Guess what? One closer, one opener equals a player championship and an open championship. One last thing about his putting. You will have seen that one, curiously, he doesn't take a practice swing. Whoa. Now, you better be pretty damn skilled before you start that. But the big key, whether or not he takes a practice swing, is that super long last look. He is taking the picture, what I call putting to the picture. He's taking a picture of the target or his adjusted target to make up for the uphill, downhill, and a break of the putt. Do that. Do it now. In fact, every single day that you practice, Every day that you practice putting, spend the first 10 minutes of practice putting actually looking up the entire time while putting. Yes, you're going to get set, feel beautiful, look up the entire time and putt your golf ball. Then observe the outcome and try again. Practice getting a super clear picture. Then when you actually putt, take that picture, looking down, still hold the picture in mind and let your genius mind deliver the putt for you. Don't think. See and feel, but don't think. All right, get after it, folks.